priesthood is made today, a part of the consideration of Good Friday, that all evil that's come into the world has come by way of the priest. That there was no murder, there was no, there was no murder, there was no sin of any kind in the world until the priest brought it into the world. First of all, Adam the priest decided by pride to turn against God. Then Cain the priest decided through jealousy to murder his brother. And then Caiaphas the high priest decided to use his priesthood to bring about the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he was not able to do it until the Judas the priest of the New Testament made it possible. Because Caiaphas even decided with those around him that we cannot kill Christ at the Passover because of the, too many of the people are following him. But they received glad tidings. One of his own apostles came unsuspectingly, and he was Judas, one of the twelve. And he said, What will you give me if I betray him? And for mere thirty pieces of silver, he betrayed Jesus Christ. And then Christ was brought to death only because of the priest. But then there is also the other side of the coin, and that is God has willed that no good come to the world except by the hands of the priest. For it is the priest that is the father of all. Adam is the priest and king and the head of the human race, and he is the father of all of us. And also those who are able to make it to the kingdom of heaven, they are all the children of priests. We receive baptism by the hand of priests. In every stage of our life, the priest is there to help us to get into the kingdom of heaven. He makes it possible for us to receive the word of God. And, and he is the minister between God and man. And one would think that with such the number of wicked priests of the Old Testament, and the, the wicked priests that brought about the crucifixion of Christ, that the Lord Jesus Christ would say, I made a mistake. Just like he said on the day of the flood, it repented me that I made man. You should have said, it repented me that I made a priest. For the priests have been the ones the most wicked in dragging down the, the, the people of God to the kingdom of hell. But what did he say? And every time he performed an important miracle in the New Testament, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. So he did not leave us without priests. Furthermore, not only did he not do that, but he made a more sacred and holy priesthood. This priesthood of the New Testament, this most wonderful priest of the New Testament, which has neither the beginning of days nor end of life, and which is built upon all. And now we come to the day of the resurrection. And on this day, whom do the angels speak about? When we consider the important words of this holy angel and consider the circumstances of it, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Cleophas and the other Mary, they go to the tomb. The apostles don't go to the tomb because they are cowardly priests locked up in the upper room. They don't believe in the resurrection. They are the ones who fled in fear on Holy Thursday night when they were never in the slightest danger. They didn't know that. Our Lord would not allow them to be harmed. One of the priests has already committed suicide and is now burning in hell. The other priests are afraid in the upper room and do not know what to do, and they will not go to the tomb. <laughs> it is certainly time to say, enough. I have had enough of the weakness of priests. I have had enough of the sins of priests. I have had enough of the viciousness of priests. And I'm going to find another way. And remember also the great attack of, of the Satan in the last 500 years is called the Protestant religion, and all the various Protestant sects. And what is it that makes them Protestant? What is their uniting element? They have no priest. They go directly to God. They don't need priests. They won't confess their sins to a man. They don't want to be blessed by a man who is a priest. They don't want to hear the words of Christ when he said, He who hears you hears me. They want nothing to do with a priest. And they are very wise. Because why do they say they have nothing to do with priests? Priests are a scandal. Priests are terrible. Priests brought evil in the world. Priests are corrupt in all manner of ways. And our Lord Jesus Christ should have thought that when his priests of the Old Testament brought about his death. The only very serious priests of the New Testament betrayed him. The other priests are cowards and ran away. And now they're confused and ignorant even though they've been in a whole seminary training of three and a half years. He taught them so much about everything that he believes in, everything that he stands for, everything that he is, and everything they must carry into the world, and yet they don't know what to do. And they don't believe. And even when the holy women come and say that Mary Magdalene saw him, and even when the holy women come and say the tomb is empty, there is no light bulb that goes on their head. They still can't figure it out. But what is the heart of heaven? 
these women come to the tomb. And they find it empty, and they see an angel inside of the tomb. And the angel says, I look up and I see women. I want to see Peter. I see women. I want to see the other ten apostles who have been faithful, even though they are cowards. And so you must go. What must you do, you holy women? Go and tell the Peter and the apostles. Let the rest of the world will find out in due time. The rest of the world will learn about this holy resurrection. But you go and tell Peter and the apostles that I, the Lord will meet them in Galilee. They're going to have to make a journey on their feet. They're going to have to travel to find Jesus Christ. And when they find the apostolic nature of our church goes to the very, very beginning. And what does it say in the sacred scripture concerning the preachers of the gospel of peace? Blessed are the feet of the preachers of the gospel of peace. Well, they must carry Christ upon their feet. They must go with their feet to find him. They must go with their feet to carry him. And hence, it is priests in heaven, the apostles, the doctors of the church, they will have a special sacred blessing upon their feet. And when we are in heaven, you'll be able to see who was a priest of God, who was a faithful priest of God, because you'll see a special sacred anointing of the feet. It's also the chief priest of the world. He is the Pope. And up until Vatican II, whenever you meet the chief priest, it was a requirement to kneel down and kiss his feet, because these are the sacred feet, the most sacred feet on the planet Earth that are meant to carry Christ to this entire world and carry this entire world to Christ. These are most sacred feet. These are the feet of the successor of St. Peter, who one day when he was in Jerusalem, or rather in Rome, he was standing upon a rock, and the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, and he saw Christ going back into Rome while Peter was leaving Rome, and he said, Lord, Domine Quo Vadis, Lord, where are you going? And our Lord said, I'm going back to Jerusalem to be crucified again. And the priest recognized. Peter was a saint at this point, and he was not being chastised by God. He was being told, this is where I want you to die. This is where I want you to become a saint. This is where I want you to enter into heaven. This is where I wish to rule upon the earth until the ending of time in this city of Rome, the very city that is trying to stamp out the world of Christianity. And now we find 2,000 years later, and we're all shocked and surprised, that the chief city trying to stamp out Christianity is the city of Rome. We should not be so shocked. We should not be so surprised. It was that way 2,000 years ago. And Peter was barefoot. And Jesus Christ was barefoot. And his feet went into the stone. And then his feet are in that stone to this very day. And 30 feet away, Christ's feet went into the stone, the feet that matched the feet of the Shroud of Turin. And Jesus Christ's feet went into the stone and left the impression. And St. Peter's feet went into the stone. And his feet are most sacred, and that stone is most sacred. And the early Christians built a church over that place where Peter said, Domine quo vadis. We must understand these last words we have recorded to St. Peter. He wrote an epistle. He wrote many words. He preached the word of God. But his last word was, Lord, where are you going? And that is where Peter went. He turned around from the direction that he was intended to go. And he went where Christ went. And he was crucified like his master. And he said he would not be worthy to be crucified in the same way as his master. And therefore he was crucified upside down. But his feet are most sacred. The feet of the preachers of the gospel of peace. And so he was crucified upside down. And his feet carry all of us to the kingdom of heaven. Now, those 2,000 years later, those feet are now in the, uh, being carried by Francis Bergoglio, who is not exactly a very holy man. But what is necessary to happen? That there be a conversion. Because Satan is terrified of the feet. He is terrified of the traveling feet of the priest. Here, Jesus Christ has died. He's risen from the dead. He's conquered death. And what does he say? Where is Peter? Where are my apostles? Tell them they have to go. Tell them they have to travel. Hence we are missionaries. Every priest of God is a missionary. It is a privilege to belong to a missionary order dedicated to the missions. But the greatest privilege of the priest 
who has done, been responsible for so many evils, in fact, all evils that are in the world, is to be able to stamp out that evil with his feet and to carry Christ to the ends of the earth. This is what must be done in order to conquer Satan. It matters about the feet of the priest. It matters about the hands of the priest. When it was injected with these gloves by the bishop, when consecrated a bishop, he put on these gloves and said, These gloves, they are a reminder of the hands of Jacob. And when Jacob went before Isaac, if he showed his real hands, he would have been cursed by Isaac and rightly cursed because they weren't the right hands that he wanted to feel. Therefore, his holy mother, Rebekah, made a special glove that was put upon the hands of Jacob so that his hands would feel hairy and his hands would feel rough. His hands would feel like the hands of a hunter, like the hands of a worker, like the hands of one who knew the rough way of working, whereas for Jacob's delicate hands, they were not appreciated by Isaac. And so likewise, God the Father, he doesn't appreciate delicate hands. He wants the hands to be adorned, and hence these gloves are placed upon the bishop. As, as Rebecca put gloves upon the hand of Jacob, that he might receive a blessing. So the bishop must have gloves upon his hands, that they are not his hands which are weak, his hands which are soft, his hands which are not worthy of receiving a blessing. But there will be another hand, and this be the hand of Christ, the hand of the, of the one who works in the field, the hand that is nailed to a cross. And the feet must be the feet that are also nailed to the cross. For the devil was quite wise when he recognized the danger of this priest. It's in his hands. Therefore he nailed his hands to the cross. And the danger of this priest is in his feet. Therefore he nailed the feet to the cross. But the feet of the nailed Christ and the hands of the nailed Christ, though they are nailed to the cross, they cannot be stopped from blessing. They cannot be stopped from giving out the sacred sacrament of Holy Communion. They cannot be stopped from bringing healing to souls by the absolution. They cannot be stopped from carrying the gospel to the very ends of the earth. <laughs> We must pray that there be priests who walk away from sin, who turn away from their own present weak purposes and turn back to Jerusalem and turn back to Rome and there go to be crucified with Christ to hold this holy faith. For it is true that evil came into the world by the priest. So it is true that good only comes to the world by the priest. And Christ's heart longs and loves all, but he especially loves his priests. He gave his own mother as a gift to his priest at the cross. When he rose from the dead, he told the angel, Where is the priest? Go and tell Peter and also the other priests. Tell the chief priests and the other priests that Christ is here, that he has risen. They must come to see the tomb, see the place where they laid him, and go and tell him he's going to meet them in Galilee, and that he is going to send them to the very ends of the earth. His last words he will speak on this earth will be said to the priests. He will say to St. Peter, he will say to the apostles, including Matthias, who has taken the place of Judas, Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Teach the gospel to every creature. Bring my gospel, bring my flesh, bring my heart, bring my spirit, bring my body, bring all things that is me, says our Lord Jesus Christ. Carry me to the very ends of the earth. And this is what the priest must do for the next 2,000 years until he come. And the tragedy of our world today is that priests no longer carry Christ. And hence the world is in a terrible place. And priests no longer have hands adorned with working hands like those that Christ wants to see. And priests no longer have the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they can't have it without the souls of the world praying for them. Hence, one duty of every Catholic is to pray for our Father. That's the fourth commandment. To pray for our Father, our Father on earth. And our Father on earth is first and foremost the priest. And only secondarily our physical Father. He is first and foremost the priest. Hence, whenever we walk by a priest, we say, Father. And why do we say Father? We don't say Father to someone else's Father. We only say Father to my Father. We don't say Father to anyone who's not our personal Father. And we have obligations to our personal Father. And hence we see every priest and we say, Father, Father, Father. 
We need fathers. We need carriers of the gospel of peace. This is what's necessary in our times. And so on this holy feast of Easter, the angels call to the priest. And when the church rises from the dead, there shall also be a calling for the priests. And just as our Lord said 2,000 years ago, Go show yourselves to the priest at his miracles. And when he rose from the dead, he said, Where is Peter and the apostles? And his last supper, he had it with his holy priests. And then his death was brought about by the priests. He is priest, Jesus Christ. And he is surrounded by priests. And priests are the ones who do him in. And priests are the ones who carry him to the ends of the earth. So let us pray for the priests that they no longer be the killers of Christ, but be rather the carriers of him until the ending of times, to the very ends of the earth. Those of God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>